Hurry in to your Jeep dealer and see how good the best values in America could be. New interim head coach Dan Miles will have some familiar faces on the bench with him today. Here's a look at a few players he has coached, either as a head coach or as an assistant coach during his time with the Baby Pens. They include Tyler Kennedy, Chris Menard, Bill Thomas, Chris Tang, Ryan Whitney, Mark Andre Fleury. Of course, we've seen a lot of players going up and down from the Baby Pens to the Penguins all season long. And if Dan Miles will saw them in Wilkesbury, you can bet that Tom Vanesky did as well. Tom is a columnist for the Wilkesbury Times leader and joins us now. Uh, by the way, we'd already planned on having Tom on before the coaching change occurred, so now that it has occurred, Tom, uh, your thoughts on what uh, Pittsburgh fans are going to see here with uh, Dan Bosman as their head coach? Uh, first off the bat, they're going to see aggressive hockey. Uh, Dan wants all his players on the offense and defensive side to be involved with the play. Uh, he, he likes for his defensemen to go up and join the rush when they can. And uh, he preaches every game, be aggressive, be the first one to the puck. And uh, I, I think he has an interesting formula that's going to uh, be interesting for Pittsburgh next 25 games here. It had obviously been successful, um, Tom, in the AHL. I mean, you know, the team is on, is on a long winning streak now, um, you know, game in hand, and they, they could, if they win their next game, they'd have the best record in the conference. So obviously it's, uh, it's working out well, that style of play in the AHL. Yeah, it is. Uh, they won their eighth in a row last night, and right now they're a point behind the first place of Her Hershey Bears. Uh, they, they've really been playing aggressive, like I said before. And the interesting thing about their current win streak, and I think this reflects on uh, Coach Bilesma, is in the last eight wins they've had 16 different players score goals. And uh, he's, they've been doing it with juggling lines and dealing with call of Pittsburgh, and uh, they've overcome that adversity to keep winning. When we originally scheduled to have you on, Tom, the idea was to talk about some of the players down there. Um, and so let's jump into that, if we might. Alex Goligoski clearly spent most of the season here. I think everybody agrees that he is an NHL caliber defenseman who just happens to be caught in a numbers game. How has he looked since he's been down there? I know that he's uh, been putting up some numbers. Does it look like he's handled the emotion well and professionally and is, and is playing with his head up, so to speak, his chin up? Oh, yeah. He, he knows. I, I think he suspects that it's only a matter of time for he gets back to Pittsburgh. And uh, he, in, in the meantime, he's been leading the team on the ice. Uh, he scored his first goal last night, and uh, he's been setting guys up and playing responsible defensively. Uh, he has a real positive attitude. He's, he's not disheartened. He knows that he just has to keep working and uh, get back up to Pittsburgh. Um, any other defenseman, maybe Ben Lovejoy or, or another defenseman on the team that looks like they could be an NHL caliber defenseman down the line? Well, you said it's Ben Lovejoy. Uh, he's leading the AHL right now with a uh, plus uh, 34 uh, in 52 games. And his uh, last season was his rookie season. And the biggest difference between last season and now that I've noticed with Ben Lovejoy is his skating has improved tremendously. He's, he's probably the the best skating defenseman that they have here in Wilkes-Barre. Uh, he's smart with the puck. He, he, he's fast. He makes, uh, makes the right passes. And he also has an offensive touch to his game. Uh, so he's, he's really evolved into a complete defenseman, both on the offensive side and in his own end. Tom Vanesky of the Wilkes-Barre Times leader is joining us. And uh, Tom, uh, we've seen goalie John Curry, we've seen Luca Caputi, we've seen Dustin Jeffrey. Those seem to be three guys that I would think also uh, would be contributors to the Penguins in the future. Oh, yeah. Uh, first off with Curry, he won his 10th uh, start in a row last night, which is a new team record here in Wilkes-Barre. Uh, his goal against is down uh, 2.38, I believe. He has 21 wins, only seven losses. Uh, Last night he stopped 38 of 40 shots, so he's being tested uh, during this 10-game win streak that he's on. Uh, he, he's just been a wall in that, and he, he's been a steady presence. And uh, Luca Caputi, the the thing that he did before he went up to Pittsburgh was crash the net and work work hard around the net, and that's the thing he's kept doing since he's been back from Pittsburgh. Uh, he, he's had a couple points, and he. he you know, he, he's crashing the net hard, he, he, he skates hard. And uh, one thing about him last night, he got his head drove into the boards on an unpenalized hit, left the ice, came back, his first shift back, he set up a goal. So he's, uh, he's tough, tough 
tough and he's, he's a good skater and he's a, a real wreaks havoc around the net. Tom Vanesky of the Wilkes-Barre Times Leader. Uh, Tom, thank you very much for your time and catching us up in the baby pens. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you. All right. Well, rarely is a new coach brought into a team under great circumstances. After all, things are going smoothly. The old coach would probably still be around. That's not the case with the Pens, who are in 10th place in the Eastern Conference as they get set to play their first game under new head coach Dan Blyzma. Here's uh, Coach Blyzma with Dan Potash, brought to you by Quicksville. All right, Rob, thank you very much. A very busy 24 hours for the man sitting next to me. And Dan, I know you had a chance to coach last night with the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, and now you're here this afternoon to coach the Pittsburgh Penguins. What kind of adjustments do you need to make going from one team to another in that short span? Uh, I think uh, there certainly is going to be an adjustment. I think uh, it's a bit of a whirlwind right now. We're not going to try to ma wave a magic wand and do a whole new system or bring drastic changes. But really, uh, the focus is on how we approach this game, our mentality, and how we want to play as a team. And that's what the good focus will be. Uh, the focus is what I met this morning with the players, and the focus will be in the meeting before the game. And really, just want to get on our toes, play aggressive, and, and force the issue, and make the Islanders deal with our, our team speed and our team skill. Is there something in particular that you spoke to General Manager Ray Sherrill about as it pertains to the team that needs to be addressed right away, whether it's special teams, uh, scoring goals, not allowing goals, or, or something as a whole? I just think uh, right now the mentality of how we play the game and how we dictate the play of the game. Uh, at times we've been a team that uh, has been, the trap has been used in terms of how we play. And, um, I think you, you need to dictate the play of the game, the pace of the game with any team you have. But when you have speed and skill, and you have uh, a lot of guys up front that can go and, and a lot of guys that can play with play with the puck, you need to dictate that by playing in the offensive zone, by getting there with speed and forcing their, their D to turn, forcing them to play in the defensive zone. And when you do that, um, their mistakes are better, their goalie, they take more penalties, you get more power plays, and you, you tip the game in your favor every night. And that's the approach we need to take in terms of getting that mentality on our toes, aggressive style of hockey. I spoke to Bill Thomas uh, before today's game, and, and I know you spent a lot of time with him this season at Wilkes-Barre Scranton, and he said you have a tremendous passion for the game. When you addressed the team and met with the team for the first time, was that passion displayed, and, and, and what kind of message were you trying to send to them? Well, I, I you know, I use those words. I think they're uh, words that Ray Shiro has used as well before, both passion and energy. But, you know, anything you choose to do in life, um, you should be excited about doing it. You should bring passion and energy, and that should show up in how you act how you work, how you deal with people. And uh, it's not always good, it's not always easy, and it's not a perfect situation right here today. But uh, this is a great spot for me, uh, and I'm going to bring in passion and energy. I'm going to bring it today, before the game, during the game, and we'll start tomorrow doing the same thing, bring that same passion and energy. And I think that's the kind of atmosphere that allows people to get the most out of themselves and sets the foundation for the team to be able to do that as well. All right, Dan, I know that uh, it's been a crazy few hours, but uh, welcome to Pittsburgh. Best of luck this afternoon. Thank you very much. Hi, Rob. Let's send it back to you. It's the Pens and the Islanders coming up at 2 o'clock. Thanks, Dan and Danny. Much more coming up from Nassau Coliseum. Plus, you hear from the Pirates and the fourth-ranked Panthers. All went Pens pregame returns.